Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Kerbal Space Program. We are just a few kilometers away from the hapless Endler, but uh, our orbit is kind of messed up. Um, I don't know, how do we even... How do we get this guy into the ship if... I was thinking when we got close enough that I'd be able to just like take control of him and... and uh, tell him to fly his EVA over here. But it doesn't seem like that's the case. Can I go look at the tracking station or something? Endler's debris. I can't do anything with it. Oh, I can fly it! Yeah. I didn't seem like I was able to earlier. <laughs> Maybe I was wrong. So what is this like? It's just a crew cabin, basically? So I could tell him to go EVA. Uh, that would be pretty dangerous, of course. Set this as the target. Um, we're getting further... No, we're getting closer together, actually. So... I don't know. Oh yes, of course, because the ship is ahead of the debris and it's moving more slowly, so the debris is catching up. That makes sense. Um, and then when we get to the ship's apoapsis, we still have an orbital adjustment to make to bring our periapsis back up out of the atmosphere. <laughs> and... Uh, That'll also speed the ship up so that we match orbits a little bit better. Okay. So let's let's head back to the tracking station and switch perspectives again to the thing with an actual uh, working engine. Our target is still set properly, I believe. Yes. So let's just time warp up a bit until this guy comes close to catching us. Our apoapsis is a hundred... alright. Well, get yourself to prograde, please. Oh, I can't while I'm flying? Fair enough. Or while I'm time warping. So he's catching up to us about now. I think if we do our burn now, it's a little less efficient than apoapsis, but it brings our orbit in sync with his while we're at the right position. So that's fine. We don't mind being a little less efficient, right? Just burn prograde. Let's we'll double check that's the direction we're pointing. Prograde. No, we're pointing retrograde, and I read the map wrong. Okay, glad I checked. Really? That's retrograde? Yeah, it is. Look at the little thing sticking out. No, that's that's prograde for sure. Hmm. Oh, this we can't lower our orbit to match his speed while also raising our periapsis. We can only lower our orbit at this ju juncture by burning over there. Ugh. So we need to raise our periapsis so we don't go careening into the atmosphere. Careening, I think, rather. There's our periapsis. It's going the wrong way. What? Am I really that, that dumb? Yeah, apparently. This is this really? I should be burning prograde, and I guess that's just retrograde, and I'm like an idiot. What? I don't know what the heck is going on. I've been reading prograde and retrograde markers quite well for several, several episodes. I don't understand how I misunderstood that one. I just like this has got to be retrograde, isn't it? Am I so crazy? Well, burning this way is bringing up our apoapsis, so I guess it's prograde. And I just, like, forgot what they look like. I'm used to looking at them on maneuver nodes rather than on the nav ball. Alright, this gets us out of the atmosphere. Our orbit looks a lot like his. And let's see what our next uh, intersect is like. Here's intersect 1, and his position at intersect 1 is pretty close by. 
So let's just, I don't know, time warp our way over to that general direction. I feel like we really ought to be able to just... We're close enough now. 50 kilometers, right? <laughs> if I burn prograde, we should like sort of catch up to him, right? I don't understand. This is hard. I'm glad we're practicing this. Um, on something less important than rescuing, like, a real astronaut. <laughs> uh, or one of ours, right? We're rescuing, I don't know, a rival space station, or space program's carbonaut or something. So, he's going pretty fast, and he's accelerating away from us. What if I were to get... Where the heck is Prograde? That one is retro. No, that's the direction we were going. Yeah, that's our prograde, isn't it? Ah, I can't even use the nav ball. I'm so flustered about what direction is prograde. Oh, you idiot. Let's look in the dang manual. What is orbital basics? Uh, orbital maneuvers? Shaping up? This is prograde with things sticking out. They go into the middle if it's retrograde. So this is retrograde. They're going into the middle. So prograde should be over here. I kind of want to be going faster at this part of the orbit, don't I? Yeah, he's stopped accelerating away from us. I guess it depends on whether we plan to catch him here or on the other side. And I don't really know the answer to that. Here's our intersect one. 88 kilometers. That seems like it's close enough. So what I'm going to do is just like... Oh, come on. Warp to here-ish. He's getting ahead of us. But... We're close enough. And... He's going to be like this? So, how exactly do I catch up properly here? I think the thing to do is, while we're basically going close to the same speed as him, we should just burn towards the target. That's retrograde away from the target. That's prograde. Well, I guess that's what we want, really, not towards the target. Why is prograde straight up? What? Away from the planet is prograde? I'm really confused about this. That's what I understand this nav ball to be saying, is that straight up is away... Oh! This is relative to the target! No wonder nothing makes any sense! Oh, how did I... Yeah, I wanted this stuff relative to orbit. Okay. Alright, but actually, let's, let's make it relative to the, the target anyway. And we'll just burn to catch up to him. What's happening to our intercepts here? His distance has not really improved at all. <laughs> uh, I don't understand. Oh, jeez. Two hundred sixty-one kilometers. He's right now just eighty-eight kilometers away. I feel like we ought to be able to get there, but I don't understand how to do it. Pause for a second. Think this over. So right now. We're traveling about the same speed as it is. Well, relative to the target, we're traveling f faster by 360 meters per second. So we're sort of catching up at this stage. But soon, we'll whip around the orbit, and he'll be going faster relative to us. 
because he'll be closer to the planet. He'll be going faster orbitally than we will be. So... What? <laughs> what do I... <sighs> it's really confusing trying to match orbits. Uh, like, matching orbits was no problem. We did that a while ago. What's a problem is matching orbits and... No, we've even accomplished matching orbits while being close. We just, like, didn't know how to close the gap of those last 80 kilometers. Hmm. What would we do to catch up? I guess we're just making matters worse right now, aren't we, by burning towards the target? We should burn retrograde away from the target in order to catch up to it. Right? So we'll burn retrograde. Our speed relative to the target right now will drop, and the target will start to accelerate away from us. But we will be in a lower orbit, which will allow us to catch up. And then once we've caught up, we'll match speed again? <sighs> but... But... This will mess up our periapsis. Our periapsis will be lower than his. And then, when we've caught up, we can adjust to raise our periapsis, but we won't be on the same, like, orbital height. We'll be, like, under him, in a way. And we'll have to re-regularize on the other side. That doesn't seem right either. <laughs> Nonetheless, I think burning towards the target now is a bad idea. We're just making it harder to catch him later. And we're not going to catch him now. We need to get our, our, our positions closer in order to do that. We do control him, so we could, if we thought it was a good idea, Ask him to get into his EVA suit and burn some propeller, f some propellant going f prograde to get his orbit at the other end to raise, which would slow him down at the other end, and then we would catch him. That seems real hard. Oh my gosh. Uh, man, how do real astronauts do this? This is impossible. <sighs> Hope you guys are enjoying this pause screen, by the way. Very exciting. Um, <laughs> I think we should improve things a bit by burning retrograde here uh, with respect to our orbit. Um, where the heck is retrograde? That is prograde, which is not what we want. So let's go over to the other side. To retrograde. Bring us on back, Jeb, please. Okay, he doesn't seem to understand exactly where I wanted him. Fine. Okay. Just throttle up a little bit. Where's our periapsis is sort of what I'm looking at. We're bringing it into the atmosphere, which is scary, but sort of what we meant to do. Wait a minute, he's not going to crash into the planet, is he? No. It just... The shadow of the planet was eating up his orbit, and I got a little concerned. So here, our separation will be 220 kilometers. But actually, I think... So are we catching up to him? Are we going to outrace him around the planet? Our orbit is lower, so we will catch up. 
I think we all overshoot, in fact. So that's him. This is us. Let's warp until we're sort of closer-ish. Or wait, no. He's still... He's... Still in front of us. And lower in orbit than we are. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, but we don't want to come crashing into the atmosphere. So I guess we still do need to do some kind of burn at, peri at Apoapsis. Not a big one, but a little. Oh, this is tricky. Alright, here we are. At Apoapsis, more or less. This is... whoops. This is prograde here, which we need to do a slight burn in that direction. Not much, just enough to get our apoapsis back out of the atmosphere. Periapsis, I mean. Okay, so here's our intersect. Separation 230 kilometers. I don't know exactly what we're supposed to do about this. Maybe I should raise that end... Raise our periapsis a bit more now. Let's try that. So that we can lower it some when we're, like, over here. We're sort of shifting where our periapsis is on the orbit? I don't know. This seems all wrong. But I'm sort of getting a little bit impatient and just trying things. So let's let's try a retrograde burn around here to lower our periapsis back to match his. Right there. Just hold it. This is lowering our periapsis. Yeah, it no longer even shows us intersects with him because we're not really ever matching his orbit. It's frustrating. He's so, like, he's pretty close. And we just can't quite seem... Alright, here we go. That's our... Our separation at that stage is coming in nicely. Let's throttle up a bit more. Okay. Whoa, oh, it's making a big difference now. As our periapsis is coming very, very close to the atmosphere. Let's leave it like that. And see what happens as we get closer to that spot. Okay, slow down, slow down. Slow, 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 slow! Now, what exactly do we want to do here? Increase our speed at this part. So let's let's burn prograde to sort of catch him on this part of the swing, and then we'll burn retrograde when we're a bit closer. I think. Oh wait, prograde is here. Stop, 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 stop. Turn around. Prograde. What is? Hello? Am I, like, no longer able to turn? I, the nav ball is not responding to my instructions at all. Did we run out of electricity? Oh, we did. Oh, no. Does this thing produce electricity when we turn it on? I think it does. I can't believe we ran out of electricity. What happens if I throttle up? Do we get a little back? No, this thing doesn't generate any electricity. <sighs> okay. 
Well, this rescue mission just got a bit more exciting. Oh, it does generate electricity, but we just spent it all immediately on the SAS. Is that what happened? No. I see. Burning just... Uh, so, alright, I now just want to get us back into the atmosphere. So forget this dang target. Get out of here. Let me look at my own orbital parameters. Our apoapsis is 119. Periapsis is 62. So I think eventually, whether we like it or not, we will come back in. And we're spinning enough that we can... Yeah, I'm giving up on this rescue mission. It's time to rescue Jeb. We are spinning enough that we should eventually, I think, point ourselves to retrograde. Yeah, maybe we should include some RCS next time we try a mission like this. Uh... <laughs> what a sad way to go. We just spent so much time doing little adjustments, and we have a pretty large reaction wheel attached, so it, it burned through our fuel a bit, or our electricity when I wasn't noticing. Well, I mean, our periapsis is within the atmosphere, so eventually we will re-enter. But... I can't really ever seem to get oriented towards... Uh, towards retrograde. We're not really spinning in that direction. Alright, well, sorry to leave you out here. I'm uh, Enler. But uh, that's just the way it's going to have to be, I guess. We should include a solar panel next time we come up, I guess. <laughs> uh, that's one thing we could do. It might be a pretty good idea, actually. Like, it's pretty easy to attach one. Um, and then we just wouldn't have to worry about electricity problems at all. But I did not predict that we would have to deal with electricity r r even as it is. Alright, so here we are. Not quite back in the atmosphere yet, I guess. and pointed completely the wrong direction to do any um, prograde burns, or retrograde, which is what I actually meant. Alright, and we're going to slow time warp down while we're within the atmosphere. My understanding is that if you're time warping, it doesn't apply atmospheric physics, but also when you re-enter the atmosphere, it's supposed to stop time warping instantly anyway. Um, so I, I, it probably didn't matter that I tried to manually adjust that. Okay. Uh, so we should now experience some arrow breaking a bit. Not a lot. Wh how low is our periapsis? 62 kilometers. Um, at least assuming that we don't get slowed down at all. But we should get slowed down some. Which direction will that make our ship point? I'm not sure. We should we should experience some uh, rolling around as a result of the atmospheric burn, but I don't really know uh, what direction that's going to be. Yeah, we're still actually gaining speed on the way back out, but is our is our apoapsis dipping? It is. So if we stayed in this orbit forever, we would land, and it might not even take that many go rounds. But I would love it if we could get pointed retrograde just by sort of luck. Yeah, we can do it like a physics warp here. Oh yeah, we're getting pointed towards prograde. That's where the ship is most aerodynamic and that's the direction it wants to go. But that's not what we want at all. So we're not going to apply the engines. Now, is it going to continue spinning in this direction, or is it going to sort of whip 
whip back around and point towards prograde. I would love it if it kept going in this direction. Apoapsis 117. No, it's it's turning back around. Yeah, the ship wants to point itself in the most aerodynamic direction. Okay, well, very exciting. Our periapsis is coming down now as well. We're experiencing enough uh, atmospheric drag to to impact this side of the orbit. Not by a lot, but a little. So this is now just a landing mission. We just need to make sure we get... I, I've given up on Endler until we can bring up another ship. But I'm, I'm glad we started this because it's a good good thing to figure out how to do. We're going to want to do an, a rendezvous like this when we get to the moon, if we take a lander stage. Or maybe we'll just land the whole ship. Uh, cause we, we could sort of have an orbital stage around the moon um, and then decouple a lander stage from that and then jump back up and dock it or something. I understand some of the moon missions went that way. I don't know if all of them did. In, in real life, I mean. Um, or we could just land the orbital stage and then take off with it, leaving the landing gear behind. I'm not sure what is the most reasonable way to do it, but if we wanted to do the have a landing stage uh, that re-rendezvous with the orbital stage, being able to do a maneuver like this would be quite useful. And at present, evidently, we don't understand how. <laughs> so what's our altitude like now? Yeah, we're on our way back up. And there's a temperature gauge there, which scares me a little. We shouldn't be experiencing that much um, atmospheric effects this this high. And look how fast the planet is going under us. We're passing over cities in, in seconds. Probably less than seconds. Yeah, and on the next go-around, our periapsis will be substantially lower. Not hugely lower, but substantially. Alright, well, let's warp up a bit more, I guess. Are we going to completely escape from the atmosphere? It looks like it, yeah. So we just bounced a bit, that's fine. Um, I'm glad our periapsis happened to be within the atmosphere. That was basically just luck. And now that we're free of the atmosphere, we're tumbling a bit, which is great news because it means we're sort of headed towards retrograde. So when we get there, we don't seem to be getting there. All right, let's just burn now. That's bringing our apoapsis down dramatically. And there's our periapsis quite, quite a bit down as well. All right, stop. We're no longer pointing retrograde. <laughs> Ugh. All right, well, we brought our apoapsis way down, but our periapsis is actually about where it was. If we end up pointing retrograde again, we'll burn a bit more to fix it. We are, we are sort of tumbling, so it seems like that may happen. We'll get pointed sort of retrograde-ish. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is close enough. I'll take it. Uh, now? Yeah, now our apoapsis is four, periapsis is 40 kilometers. Okay, so just sort of random thrusting when the ship's tumble happens to line up with the direction we want to go seems to be doing the trick. We won't have to do like 10 orbits of slowly bleeding off, uh, bleeding off speed, it looks like. I have no idea if we're come down over an ocean, and I'm really not going to try to fix it. So let's time warp a bit. We one thing we could do is jettison the the engine at this point. I'm not sure if we should yet, or if it'll be useful to have it over here. I think it'll be useful to have. I guess we we can't point at the direction we want, so it's not going to be that useful, huh? Okay, 
we're, we're back in the atmosphere now, I guess. Yeah, for the last time. This should be our re-entry now. For real. And we're not really pointed the right way at all with this um, engine, so let's just let's just get rid of it. See ya. Now I'm not sure if that thing is gonna re-enter or not. I guess it will, right? It's not going fast enough to bounce back out. But um, we... Oh, I just realized we can't orient ourselves prograde because we don't have any electricity. Or retrograde. Oh, dear. Well, here's hoping that the crew cabin is... thermally stable. <laughs> I guess. Um, because we're really not likely to... We're likely to point exactly the wrong way. We'll, the ship will rip, whip itself around towards prograde as it's doing right now. Uh, and we'll be coming down like a dart instead of um, presenting the heat shield like we want to. Oh, that's spooky. Maybe I should have left Jeb up in atmosphere. Uh, up in space, in orbit, I should say, and send a second rescue mission. <laughs> I understand that's a, a tradition in Kerbal Space Program, is sending a rescue mission to rescue the rescue mission who went up to rescue someone else. Um... That's a, that's a resource we've never run out of before, and it just didn't even occur to me that I was using it up. Uh, a solar panel would help. Uh, a su so the best thing, of course, would be to just not be so bad at this, not need to or use so much electricity, because we would have like an actual plan to rendezvous. But assuming that I can't just instantly get better... Um, Slapping a solar panel on will sort of patch over my deficiencies by letting us continue to be bad um, and generating some electricity for us. Okay, well, here we are. Oriented, yeah, pretty close to prograde, all right. Something is burning through some thermal shielding. I guess it's the crew cabin. And I really, like, uh, I just have no control at this point, right? I can turn on SAS and nothing will happen. He can't turn it. Can he? No, that's just the atmosphere doing it. Yeah, I can I can push on the pitch all I want and nothing much is happening. All right, well, we'll just time warp a bit and hope for the best, I suppose. Yeah, the ship is rocking along this axis, but it keeps coming back to prograde. Yeah, our periapsis is way over there. Apoapsis is behind us. So we might actually be bouncing off the atmosphere again. I'm not sure. No, periapsis... Apoapsis is coming down probably into the app yeah we'll we'll never make it down to 35 kilometers and then bounce back up from that that's just madness we're just uh taking a while to get in a very very shallow re-entry uh yeah the ship is now on fire and we're not presenting the heat shield like we wish we were but the crew cabin, the two parts we have on here are pretty pretty thermally tolerant, so maybe it'll be okay? No, it looks like the crew hatch is about to explode. The front part with the pilot in it, I mean. The pod. Maybe that's just the mystery goo. Oh yeah, everything's real hot. Oh my gosh, I jumped. That was the mystery goo burning off. Nothing important. We, we didn't complete the scientific mission that we had, but we might still complete rescuing Jeb. We're going real fast, though. Not really showing any signs of slowing down, either. On the other hand, everything seems to be sort of within tolerances, heat-wise. Maybe not the crew cabin. It's having some trouble. Mm, this is 
scary and sad. I guess there's nothing important in the crew cabin right now. If it burns up, that's fine. <laughs> we didn't manage to rescue anyone. <laughs> so there's nothing important in there. Oh, boy. We're slowing down, at least. We're not speeding up anymore. That's good. Oh, that's the parachute's overheating marker. Yep, there goes the crew cabin. Aha! That was enough to fix our aerodynamics so that we're pointing in a way that's going to slow us down. Great. All right. We brought back Jeb. What a singular triumph this has been. Honestly, there's no way this mission could have gone any better. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, yeah, let's deploy that parachute, huh? Safe to deploy, right? Yeah. I guess I shouldn't count my chickens before they're hatched, right? We haven't brought back Jeb until he lands. What's our altitude like? 2,000, 1,000. Oh my gosh. There goes the parachute. Whew. 400 meters up. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll watch it from Jeb's point of view, huh? That space up there. And this is our ground space. Mm, I'm not sure. Well, our radar altitude is real low. We're about to land. Um, yep. Huh. Oh man, I need I need a I need a nap. That was terrible. We got jet back. Amazingly. The the thing whips it, so like as soon as we lost the crew cabin. The rest of the ship righted itself. So the crew cabin must be doing some bad things to our aerodynamics. That's why having two of them made it basically impossible to to keep the ship pointed right, I guess. Huh, I wonder why. Like, I can see why with the crew cabin as it is, it wants to orient itself nose forward. What I don't understand is why it orients itself nose backward with just the crew pod, because nose forward should be the most aerodynamic shape. And... When we're coming down, it should orient itself... Is it orienting around the center of mass? The center of mass pointing... I guess we're experiencing forces which are pushing the ship and they're coming from the earth pushing the part of the ship that is forward of the center of mass they're sort of trying to push that backward and so it which way is most efficient depends sort of on whether the center of mass I don't know it's a big old mystery to me. But, okay, we're home. And, uh, we did not complete our contract. Wait, we checked off the box, save Endler Kerman? No, we didn't. Recover him on Kerman. Uh, okay, and if we put, like, a... I don't know. Get scientific data from space around Kerbin is something we could do real easy. We don't even need to orbit. Just shoot straight up, do some science, land. So maybe we'll do that next. I don't know. Well, a bit of a disastrous mission, but it all turned out okay in the end, sort of, for everyone except for Endler. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.